guys. This is Mrs. Shopper. We're going to be talking about angles of elevation and depression today. So we're going to be using a little bit more with sine and cosine and building on that idea. All right. So let's just kind of review a little bit how to find X when we're using sines and cosine. Um, so when my angle is 59, I have the information for the opposite and adjacent. So opposite and adjacent is tangent. So the tangent of 59 is equal to opposite over adjacent. And keeping in mind that the tangent of 59 is a number. So to solve this equation, I'm gonna multiply both sides by 18.5. So 18.5 times the tangent of 59 is equal to 30.79. We're gonna to round to the nearest hundredth. All right, so we're using the law of sines and cosines. When we're trying to find, or sorry, we're using sine, cosine, tangent, the trig functions when you're trying to find that. The inverse trig functions are used when you're trying to find an angle measurement. So when I look at this one, here's my angle. I've got adjacent and hypotenuse. So we're talking cosine. So I have the cosine, the inverse cosine of so ka, 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 adjacent over hypotenuse. Nine over 13 is equal to the measure of angle X, all right? So on my calculator, I'm gonna put inverse sine. I'm gonna do nine divided by 13, and I'm going to get the measurement of angle X is 46.19. So this is kind of just a little bit of review because we're gonna be using trig functions when we're talking about angles of elevation and depression. All right, here we go. Note cards, angle of elevation. That is an angle formed by a horizontal line and an observer's line of sight to an object above, okay? So let's say we're sitting, like I like how they have the stadium, right? I'm sitting in the stadium and I'm looking up to the scoreboard, right? So that's gonna be an angle of elevation. I'm gonna be looking up. Okay, angle of depression at a stadium is I'm sitting there and I'm looking down at the field. All right, I'm looking down at the field. That's my horizontal line is where I'm looking. Now I look down, that's my angle of depression. All right, so my eye level is my horizontal line. When I look to the scoreboard, I'm elevating my look. When I look down to the field, I'm, it's an angle of depression, I'm looking down. So let's take a look at this. Maria is at the top of a cliff and sees a seal in the water. If the cliff is 40 feet above the water and the angle of depression is 52 degrees, what's the horizontal distance? This is a key word. What's the horizontal distance, that distance right there, for the seal? So what I have is a triangle. You know me, let's sketch it out. All right, what I know is that this is 40. What I know is that that needs to be X. When I look here at this picture, I'm gonna zoom in here. The angle of depression is 42 degrees. So I have two options here. I can either use alternate interior angles. So I have my two parallel lines because they're both horizontal. And I can say that angle C is 52 or I can say this entire angle right here is a 90 degree angle. So I can say that this is 90 degrees. So if the angle of depression is 52, then I can say this measurement is 38. And so either strategy works. You can either say you're dealing with opposite and adjacent and use this um, tangent of 38 um, or so the tangent of 38 is X over 40, or you can use the tangent of 52 is 40 over X. It doesn't matter which way you go, all right? You pick the one that works best for you, whatever makes the most sense for you. So if identifying this as a 52 degree angle works for you, then do that. If this, working with this 38 degree angle, that works too, whichever. So I'll just write them both down so you can see it. The tangent of 38 is equal to opposite over adjacent. 
Or you can say that the tangent of 52 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So either one is going to get you what you need. So tangent of 38 times 40, I get that the horizontal distance is 31.25 feet. We're using trig functions. We're applying trig functions to the angle of depression and angle of elevation type problems. Here we go, next one. At the circus, a person in the audience is at ground level. All right, so I'm gonna draw this person. They're sitting down here, right? They're at ground level and they're watching a high wire routine. A five foot six inch tall acrobat standing on a platform. Here's my platform. It's 25 feet off the ground. This person is five and a half feet up here. How far is the audience from the member of the base of the platform? So how far is the audience from the base of the platform? If the angle of elevation from the audience member's sight line to the top of the acrobat is 27 degrees. So each part I go along. So this person sitting in the audience is looking up 27 degrees. It's a 27 degree um, elevation. There we go. All right. So I've got that this total is 30.5. And I want to figure out this. So if I'm going to use the angle 27 opposite over adjacent, the tangent of 27 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So what I'll probably do is multiply both sides by x. So x times the tangent of 27 is equal to 30.5. And I'll divide both sides by the tangent, the tangent of 27. And so the audience member is 59.86 feet away. All right, a couple more here. Um, a diving competition is on a six foot tall diver, stands atop a 30, oh, okay, I gotta draw this out. So a 32 foot platform, six foot tall diver. The front edge of the platform projects five feet beyond the end of the pool, okay? And then the pool itself is 50 feet in length. This is 50. A camera is set up at the opposite end of the pool, even with the pool's edge. So here's our little camera. Okay, like my camera, it's a cute drawing. <clears throat> if the camera is angled so the line of sight extends to the top of the diver's head, What is the camera's angle of elevation to the nearest degree? Ooh, that's a good, nearest degree. That's a good point. Okay, so then if I have that the platform projects five feet beyond the end of the pool. So that's actually coming out another five here. So I'm going to do opposite over adjacent inverse tangent. So the inverse tangent, because I want to find my angle measurement, is opposite which is a total of 38 divided by 55. So the inverse tangent of 38 divided by 55 is 34.64 feet. Oh, no, not feet, 34.64 degrees which is 35 degrees because we want it to the nearest degree. Last one. Brian is at the top of deck of a cruise ship and observes two dolphins below. Brian's position is 150 meters, 154 meters above sea level, and the angles of depression are 35 and 36. Find the distance between the two dolphins. Ooh, I like this problem. 
Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna draw two different triangles, totally not to scale, All right? In both of these cases, Brian is 154 meters above the ground. One has an angle of depression of 35, one has an angle of depression of 36, okay? So that means this is 36, this is 35. We want to know the difference. So really this little area right here between the two dolphins. So what I can do is figure out how far each dolphin is and then subtract those amounts. So on the first one, I'm going to try to, let's see here, opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 35 is equal to 154 over X. So then X is equal to 154 divided by the tangent of 35, which is 219.93. I'm gonna round for right now, just because then it helps me figure out the right answer. Um, and then, I'm gonna shift this over a little bit. I'm gonna take the tangent of 36 is 154 over X. So 154 divided by the tangent of 36 gives me 211.96. So they are eight meters apart. So this is really like a twofer. You have to answer two trade questions in one to get your final answer. All right. So your assignment <laughs> is up there and you are welcome to get going. Have a good day. Bye. I think that's bye.